In this problem, we're told a juggler throws a bowling pin straight up with an initial speed of 8.2 meters per second. How much time elapses until the bowling pin returns to the juggler's hand? So we have this hand of this juggler, and he's going to be throwing this bowling pin up, right? So I'm just going to draw a rock. It's basically the same thing. So just imagine he throws this pin up, and then it's going to travel back down. So that's just what's going to be happening there. So keep that in mind when you solve this. But let's go ahead and write down what we're given. So what are we given? So initially they tell us the initial speed is 8.2 meters per second. So we know V sub zero, the initial velocity is going to be 8.2 meters per second. So they tell us that. And then also in free fall problems. So this is an example of a free fall because it's going to be falling down and you don't take into account error resistance. But so when we do problems like this, you want to assume if you're on earth, like we're assuming we're on earth here. So the acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's something you're going to have to assume uh, when you're doing free fall problems. So that's what we know. We know the acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we also know delta y, which is the change in y, is going to be zero. And I'm going to try and explain to you why that is. So it's going to be zero meters. And keep in mind what they're asking. They're asking how much time elapses until it returns to the juggler's hand. So it's going to start in the hand, right? So imagine our y is zero right now, right? And then it's going to go up uh, so many meters, right? We don't know. And then it's going to travel back down. And it's going to return at zero meters. So it's change in y from the beginning to the end is still going to be zero, right? Because it starts at zero, goes up, and then ends at zero. So zero minus zero is just going to be zero. So the change in y is going to be zero meters. So now we've got these variables laid out. Let's find out what they're asking. They're asking how much time. So time, we denote by t. So we're going to say t equals question mark because that's what we're solving for. So we've laid out uh, what we're given. Now let's look at our kinematic equations and decide which we're going we're gonna to use to solve. So notice here uh, what we're given. And notice that this equation right here, 1, 2, and 4, all contain the variable v. And we don't know v, so we can't use those to solve. And if you look at the third one, uh, notice how we're given all these variables. Uh, it says delta x here. Just keep in mind it's delta y because it's still in one dimension. doesn't really matter. Uh, just imagine it's delta y. They're the same equations. So it's going to be delta y we're given, right? We're given v sub 0. We're given a. And we're solving for t. So it works out perfectly. So the equation we're going to use is delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. So we're going to use this to solve. All we have to do is plug in our variables. So delta y we know is 0 equals v sub 0 which is 8.2 times t plus 1 half times a, and we know a, it's going to be minus 9.8 times t squared. So if we simplify this a bit, 1 half times minus 9.8 is minus 4.9. So 0 equals, and I'm going to move this out front, so it's going to be minus 4.9 t squared, right? That's this part, plus 8.2 t. And so here what we're trying to do is solve for t. So the way I'd go about doing this, and I recommend you do it too, is by taking this, plugging in your graphing calculator, and in your graphing calculator, if you plug it in, and you find where this equals zero, right, because it equals zero, if you find where t equals zero, that's going to be your values for t. So I recommend just plugging this in your graphing calculator, solving for t. If you use the zero function, it makes it easier. So if you go ahead and do that, you're going to get two different values. You're going to get one, t equals zero, and t equals 1.673 four and so on. So the reason you get two different values, I want you to think about this. So this is going to be the time it takes to reach this, right? So keep in mind the one is zero, right? Because we're trying to find, essentially what this does is finds the time it takes to, or the times it's at when the change is zero. So keep in mind in the beginning, the change is zero, right? Because it's not moving, it's still at zero. So it's going to start at zero. So that's why time equals zero, because it hasn't moved. But then it's going to travel up and then travel back down. And that's why we get the second time. The second time is going to be the time it takes for it to go all the way up and all the way down. That's the reason we have two different values. So keep in mind what they're asking until it returns to the juggler's hand. So they're talking about the second time, right? The time for it to go all the way up and the time for it to, or the time it goes up and down. So we're going to be using the second time here. So that's going to be your answer. I'm going to round it to this place right here. So the hundredths. So 1.67. And then keep in mind the unit we're using, this is time, and we've been using meters per second, so the time unit is seconds. So it's going to be 1.67 seconds. So this right here is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.